Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Donny Graham Builds. On this week's episode, we're building a DIY toddler bed, Montessori bed, Mon Montessori bed. I don't know how to say it, but it's a real trendy bed for a toddler. <laughs> Let's get to work. All right guys, we're back from the lumber yard and we are unloading. For this project, we're using white oak. My desired thickness is actually two inches by two inches, but you can see here, this is one inch material. And that's because normally when I rip two inch boards, it turns out there's usually a lot of tension in thicker boards and they end up going really wonky. And I gotta do a lot of milling and I end up losing material along the way. So instead I figure I'd just skip that step all together and glue up two one by pieces. And this gives you much more sturdy stock with a lot less tension. And thankfully the lumber yard that I sourced these from actually had really long boards. These were all about 12 foot long. So I did have to break out every clamp that I owned in order to get them all glued up. But once they were, we could go over to the miter saw and start breaking things down to their rough lengths. And then we could start working on getting this lumber ready to use. Spend my coin for sure. I'm gonna be myself or I could be someone After we were done breaking to rough length, we could take it over to the joiner and get everything nice and square and ready to go to the next steps, which would be the planer. Now, this process, for those of you who are unfamiliar, is called milling lumber. You take rough stock and you get it to a usable dimension that you need for your project essentially what you would buy from the box store. Now, you don't have to do this for this project. The plans linked down below are gonna be referencing two by two material, so you could buy two by twos, or you could use two by fours and rip them down as you need. So don't be intimidated if you don't have all of this different milling equipment. This is definitely approachable without those. This is my time now. I'm gonna be myself, or I could be someone else. No one's stopping me now. Gonna All right, so we got everything milled down. Again, we're using white oak for this. Um, originally, I was gonna try to do two by two blocks, but I ended up having going down to an inch and three quarter by an inch and three quarter. Still plenty strong, still stocky, especially with white oak. It's really dense, strong wood. Everything is milled down. These all look really uniform and really pretty. Now we're going to take them to the table saw with the crosscut sled to cut everything down to width and to cut our angles to handle the canopy of the toddler tower. Getting really excited. This is the part where it starts to actually look like a thing, so it should be really fun. Let's get to work. Now, to accomplish these angled cuts, I'm using my Rockler crosscut sled. You don't have to have this sled. It is really handy to have for a plethora of different reasons in the shop, but it's not essential. You could definitely just use a miter gauge and accomplish the exact same thing. So for the record, I'm not freakishly tall. I just have to stand on stuff because I'm running out of space in my shop. But let's back to the build. We are going to start pulling this thing together. And for that, I'm going to use my Festool Domino. You don't have to have a Festool Domino. You could use pocket old screws or you could use dowling. Dowling jigs, those would work just fine uh, and are much, much cheaper than this option. Uh, so the first thing we're doing is going to be pulling the front rail system together. I'll throw a little image here in the corner just to let you know where I'm at. We'll do the front rail system, the sides, and then the back. They'll all go together the same way. The spacing is all mapped out on the plans. Plans are linked in the description below. So if you want to check out this bed, if you want to build this yourself, definitely go check those out. So without further ado, I think we're ready to go. I'm only going to do one domino per connection on all the little slats, and I'll do two at the main joints that make up the canopies. So let's get to work. Now, I find that the best way to make sure that all the slats line up from the top rail and the bottom rail is to clamp those rails together and then mark out your spacing and carry those lines down from the top rail to the bottom rail. And that'll give you your layouts to mark all your dominoes or your dowels or pocket screws or whatever you're gonna use for your joinery. And while I'm laying those out and getting ready to start making some domino mortises, let me just go ahead and throw in the shameless plug. If you're liking this video, if you like videos with custom furniture, with home renovations, anything of that sort, be sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. I put a video like this out about every two to three weeks, maybe four weeks if family life gets a little bit crazy. This is not my full-time job, just a weekend hobby. Uh, but I would love to have you guys along for the ride. Very passionate about it. And I'm very passionate about empowering you guys to tackle new things. Okay, so this is gonna be for my daughter's toddler bed. Uh, so we don't want sharp edges. Uh, I kicked around the idea about what kind of profile edge. I do really like chamfers. However, I wanna make sure everything was nice and round and smooth to the touch. 
So I went ahead and swapped in my 3 8 inch round over bit and my trim router. Ideally, I would just set up the router table and do my half inch route like the big boy half inch shank router bit and just run these all through. That would be a lot faster and a little bit less work on my wrist. But I don't have a 3 8 inch bit for that router and I only have the platform router table. Maybe I'll build a router table in a future video. So right now, we're just gonna take these one by one and just do every edge with the trip router. So, nothing to it but to do it. No. That's uh, that's not for me. Let's go get the right size. Uh, man, that's annoying. I'm just so excited about that clip. I filmed all those different little scenes, which just feels really silly doing those things, but if they didn't have the bit, that's okay. There's always more than one way to do something when you're woodworking, so I've got an idea that I think is gonna work. Let's get back to the shop and give this a try. Goodness, that was frustrating. Uh, so what I ended up doing here is using the T-Track in my workbench to clamp down a clamp that I had actually clamped to my router, and that worked pretty well to make a little quick makeshift router table. With that figured out, everything routed over, we could start assembling our different sub-assemblies. We're gonna do the front rail, the headboard, the footboard, and the back rail. They all go together the exact same way. So let's walk through this and get it done. Okay, with all the rail systems clamped and set aside, we could turn our attention to the canopy, which is gonna make the upper structure here. Now, I use two floating tenons here, two floating dominoes. Uh, that is very important. This is the main structural integrity part of this joint, simply because this is an edge grain to end grain glue up, which is inherently fairly weak. So these floating tenons are super important. What I ended up doing is getting the tenons set and then pounding them together with just a little bit of love from the mallet and using a couple of off cuts to get even clamping pressure. These are the same offcuts with the same degree angle, so reversing those on either end gives me a flat surface to clamp against. This was still a little challenging given the length of the piece, but we ended up getting it done. If I were to do it again, I would probably use the blue tape and CA glue trick to temporarily attach those to either end, that way they didn't shift so much on me. Man, talk about the clamp Olympics. It's only one clamp, but it's just, it, it's a long distance and you gotta keep the offcuts on either end to get actual decent pressure, squeeze that joint together, ignore the glue. Uh, that should clean up pretty well, but this is a good time where pocket holes would just be tremendously easier. I just don't wanna see the pocket holes, so I'm using the dominoes. This would equally be difficult with dowels, um, so kind of pick your poison. Cleaner look, more effort during the glue up, not so clean look, really, really fast to put together. So uh, I record all my videos on my phone, and I just realized that my mic does not work with my new phone. So apologies in advance, I'll find a new one. This one is trash. Uh, we're at the point in this project where we need to bring this joint together, the canopy top. I don't really have a good method to do this. Uh, the first thing that came to mind is just kind of doing the clamp in, clamp a clamp to a clamp kind of method, and I'll, we'll get more into that in a little bit. But if you've got a good idea on, hey, this would have gone way better if you had done this instead, I am all ears. Be sure to throw that down in the comments. If it's a good one, I'll mark it as a highlighted comment because I'm sure people are coming to this video wanting to build this style bed and are gonna run into the same issue. And if my idea does not work, 
I mean, we'll find something that does, but if we've got one in the comments that's already queued up and ready to go, I'm sure people appreciate that resource. So, without further ado, let's mortise out some dominoes, sorry about the train, and let's get this joint pulled together. Now, just like the legs from the last shot, the top joint of the canopy is also getting two dominoes per connection just to strengthen that up. Somehow, I lost the footage of getting this all pulled together, but this is essentially what it looked like, clamping two clamps down, then pulling on those clamps to pull the joint together. And it ended up working pretty well. Once that was done, we had two canopy pieces and all of our rail systems ready to go. Okay, so things are coming along. Uh, so here's the front arch, obviously. And there's our front rail. That's just gonna be an open space where Amy can crawl in and out of the bed. Uh, here are two side rails. I'm obviously not going to permanently attach these. Uh, I do have, you can actually see it right over there, the Fez Tool knockdown hardware. However, I realize with the domino joiner, I've been using that a lot. I wanna make sure this project is still approachable for people who don't have a you know, $1,200 machine. So in lieu of doing the knockdown hardware with the Festo Domino, I'm actually going to do, I think they're right over here, threaded inserts and hex bolts uh, for the knockdown hardware between the side panels and then the three top stretchers across the top. So that way it's still accessible for everybody else. All of these joints here can definitely be done with dowels or with pocket hole screws. Pocket hole screws would have been tremendously easier. Um, you just wouldn't be able to you know, hide them as well unless you plugged them. So keeping this approachable, using threaded inserts as knockdown hardware, that way we can take it apart and move it as we need to when we go to different houses and et cetera, and to just get it into the bedroom. So tomorrow we will start on that. Now, when it comes to attaching the rail systems, I wanted to make sure that I had a consistent height all the way around the bed. And I just used six offcut pieces from the stock that I've been working with to make sure that those were all the exact same. I then clamped, marked for dominoes. You've seen me drill a ton of dominoes in this video, so I'm not gonna show you anymore. I'm just gonna skip ahead and show you where the dominoes are already in, everything's clamped tight, and I'm double checking for square. Now, the back assembly, which is the back canopy part and the rail permanently attached together, and then the front assembly, front canopy part, and that smaller rail, are permanently attached together. And then as we mentioned before, threaded inserts will be used for the headboard and footboard. That way we can break this down and we can transport it easily into the bedroom and then into our next house whenever we go to move. For the threaded inserts, I am going to countersink these with a Forstner bit. That way it just sits a little bit deep. I countersink with the Forstner bit, then drill all the way through to mark the holes on the actual rails. And then I follow up, drill out the rail holes a little bit thicker and use threaded inserts. Now a little trick for threaded inserts, they come with this Allen key. I usually cut the Allen key off and then chuck it up in my drill bit and then you can drive it in this way. That way you're not turning an Allen key 52 times every time you wanna drive in a threaded insert. The exact same thing does work for the bolts and this is a great tip anytime you're dealing with something like Ikea furniture that has a lot of hex bolt action. Just cut it off, chuck it up in your drill, save yourself a lot of time. Now with the lower rail systems connected, the bed was fairly sturdy, but since this is gonna be a toddler bed, I wanted to make sure that it was rock solid. So I am adding three additional stretchers at the top at each different joint. Now I could have left these blocky the same size stock as everything else, but I thought it would look a lot better if I marked the angle and then cut it on the table saw. That way it blended in with the existing angle of the canopy. Now, because we spent all that time making sure this bed could break down, we need to carry that same theme up to the upper stretchers and put threaded inserts in. So the two outside corners do have threaded inserts. However, for the middle joint, because it has that seam there, a threaded insert would look really ugly. Uh, so I actually just opted to use a couple of pocket hole screws here. I think it'll be plenty strong. And if we have to back that screw out here and there to move the bed around, it shouldn't be a big issue. Stopping tonight. 
The next steps are going to be to sand and finish. Normally I hate sanding, but because this is going to be a bed for my daughter, the last thing I want is for her to get a splinter. So we broke out the hand sanding, broke out the orbital sander, and we got to work. Are you sanding your bed? Yeah, you should do a little bit of work since, you know, Keep going. you Stand didn't do anything. Like this. With the grain. Oh. I mean, that was what you were saying still out here. Oh, I seriously, yeah, yeah. City lights looking fine And I know this is my time now I'm gonna be myself Or I could be someone else now for finish, I opted to use boiled linseed oil. Uh, it doesn't provide a ton of protection, but I absolutely love the way that oil brings wood tone to life. So that's what I went for. However, this was very labor intensive. If you were gonna do this and you're not overly concerned about the depth of the wood color, uh, I would definitely just recommend using a sprayer and hitting with a polyurethane. It would do plenty of protection and it would be way faster. Off camera, I went ahead and made some slats and attached a couple ledges on either side to secure the slats through with one screw on each end for each slat. After that, we can move this into Amy's room and get ready for that B-roll. guys that's gonna do it for this week's video thank you so much for following along making it all the way to the end super super excited with how this came together very fulfilling to be able to build this for my little girl we've got railing systems we've got the canopy we've got lights it looks great off camera I updated her little animal pictures from walnut to white oak to match the bed frame we added some storage below just so we didn't lose this amount of space in the room. And overall, we're just really, really happy with it. And my daughter is absolutely pumped. I'll show a clip here of a second when she saw it for the first time, it was so adorable. Thank you guys so much for following along. Super appreciate it. Remember, if you wanna build this, there are plans linked below. I'll take you over to my Etsy page. It's not a very complicated build. The angles aren't too bad. The slats, all the measurements are already mapped out for you. So don't be intimidated by this. Super approachable and you get to build your kid their bed, which is really satisfying. That's going to do it for this week's video. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, do all the things, and we'll see you in the next one. I'm bored. All right. Amy, what do you say? Thank you, Daddy. You're welcome, baby. Thank you for my bed. You're welcome.